Hallelujah. If you are celebrating the Lord, can you make it louder? Hallelujah. <laughs> Testimonies are an opportunity to celebrate God and the congregation of his people. It is a way to cast the news of the kingdom, of God's faithfulness, of his power, of his might, and of his signs and wonders among his people. Tonight is your night for your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. One more time, can we celebrate God for everything he does in our midst from time to time? Hallelujah. One more time, I'll be craving your indulgence to please celebrate as I invite the following people upstate to come and testify of God's goodness and his wonders in their lives. Igwe and Tony, can you please celebrate? Igwe and Tony. Vincent Emmanuel Adamu. Vincent Emmanuel Adamu. Pam Peace. Pam Peace. Mr. and Mrs. Oladuni. And then the last but not the least, Mr. and Mrs. Owen Akpan. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, while they are making their way to the front, I'd like you to please pay attention to the following reports of God's power and his faithfulness. I'll be starting with that of Paul Odekina. Paul says, I left here last Sunday after the miracle service with the expectation of God's miracle as regards my finance. I kept believing God throughout the week and his words through his prophet, Apostle Joshua Selman, that our coming back next week is to come and testify. This morning, tell your neighbor this morning, after Sunday service, God came through for me by blessing me financially through a stranger. It was a huge and a very big surprise. Can we join him to celebrate God for that? And then he did not stop there. Someone else asked again for his account details and funds were transferred to him. Can we join Paul to celebrate God for this? supernatural supplies you are next in line for your own in the name of jesus the next is that of nifemi Pelimo. nifemi says on monday himself and his brother left home were left at home i beg your pardon herself and her brother were left at home and they were hungry so she went to the kitchen to make some food when the food, while the food was on fire, she saw it was getting dark. And so she decided to go and turn on the generator. She went ahead and turned on the generator. And then after a while, the generator went off by itself. She returned to check what had happened and she realized the fuel had been exhausted. So she decided to put some fuel into the generator and while doing this, some of the fuel spilled on her body and then she got angry and began to pour the fuel with no caution. And then more of the fuel poured around the generator and spilled on her body as well. She immediately turned on the generator and there was an explosion of fire. Her leg caught fire and she went into a shock and cried saying god it's not yet my time and she instantly after that cry remembered that she was not far from a tap of water she dashed for the tap and she was able to quench the fire on her legs and ran out to the streets to cry for help they called for her mother her mother took her to the hospital and they realized there were not much injuries. But by the time they returned later that night, they discovered the gas that she was making use of to cook was actually on and was radiating around everywhere. But the fire that lit up from the generator did not catch that gas that was released. Can we join her to celebrate the Lord? For preservation because that would have been a more massive explosion one more time can we shout hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The next testimony is that of Adehi Thomas. Adehi says, after I went for a medical checkup, which I was told about my high cholesterol, I was placed on diabetic food plan towards the end of April. I beg your pardon. I was placed on diabetic food plan. Towards the end of the April miracle service, which was last week, Apostle made mention of my case and declared that I was healed and that I should go for another round of checkup. He made this declaration without even setting his eyes on me. Afterwards, I went for the test three days ago. I, my, my cholesterol level had dropped from 9.1 to 2.4. I immediately called a doctor friend of mine and told him about my testimony. Who responded saying that was not possible. But I told him the God of Koinonia did it. Can you celebrate the God of this great house? The next testimony is that of Olari Waju Koka from California, USA. Olari Waju says, I have been suffering from back pain for a while. The pain gets so excruciating that I will sometimes request my wife or children to stand on my back to bring some ease. Sometimes it will feel like I was carrying a very heavy burden. However, during the miracle service last week, the month of April, apostles started ministering to those with health issues, asking us to place our hands on any part of our body where we were expecting a healing. I placed my hand on my back, and to my surprise, the first case that apostle called was back pain. The moment he mentioned back pain, I started exercising my back and claiming my healing. Though I was still feeling some slight pain, I ignored it. The next day being Monday, I went about my day and then suddenly realized that I could do the things I couldn't do before and the pain had left. I screamed, the pain is gone moved around, exercised my back a couple of times, and kept thanking Jesus for my healing. I have returned to thank the Lord who is my healer, and to also appreciate his servant. Can we join him to celebrate the name of the Lord for healing on the back? Whatever pains you came with tonight, you will search for those pains, and you will see them no more in the name of Jesus Christ. The next is that of Chigbo. And Chika Izumba from United Arab Emirates. We live in the UAE and we've been out of employment for a while. Everything we tried to do to get back in employment yielded no result. The fear of our children being kicked out of school and the disgrace that will come with it wanted to overwhelm us, but we kept our faith in God. And we were encouraged regularly by the teachings of Apostle Selman. Can we celebrate God for those powerful teachings? During this period, we listened to the message on divine intervention and carried out the instructions that were given, keying into every prophetic declaration that was made. Hallelujah. And as well as the miracle service. These messages transformed us despite what we were going through and just when we were almost completely broken by our condition, God showed up, giving us a very big job in a big organization in Bahrain. Can we join them to celebrate the name of the Lord? We are still amazed at the speed. It took four days from the contract discussion the acceptance, the mobilization, and the offer letter. Can we join them to celebrate God one more time? <laughs> Secondly, our son, who was a very healthy boy before our traveling to the UAE, suddenly developed constant stomach pain. The specialist at the hospital saw no root cause and simply attributed it to environmental change. Yet, this pain persisted. 
During the March miracle service, Apostle prophesied that somebody with stomach pain just got healed. We shouted amen all the way from UAE. And from that day till date, the pain had disappeared. Hallelujah! The next testimony is that from Sue Bright from Texas, USA. Sue Bright says, in February this year, I was out of work and nothing was forthcoming in my area of specialization. So I went and embarked up on a retreat. Immediately after the retreat, God gave me a high-paying job. Hallelujah. However, the devil was not happy with that. So while at the job, I kept having this urge to cheat on the time that I submitted for payment. I tried to resist it. I prayed, but was consumed with a heavy spirit of lust for money and greed. I yielded to the deceiver's voice and cheated on my time sheet. I was eventually paid for a day that I did not work because of this alteration. Although I got the money, I was greatly troubled by my conscience that I could not even pray. In one of Apostle's messages, he mentioned that we should make a list of every sin that easily besets us and cry to God to destroy them. I engaged in the prayers with fasting, asking God to destroy the spirit of greed and lost for money from my life. Last Sunday morning, before the miracle service, my supervisor called me asking if I had worked on the said day. I replied with a no. Then she said, you know you were paid for that day. I don't know what is going to happen to you, but I will escalate this and we will get back to you. I was devastated. I thought I would lose my job and be shamed. So all through that day and the miracle service, I, pled, I pleaded for God's mercies. During the service, Apostle Selman stressed on finances and even mentioned a case of someone who made a bad decision concerning their finance and prayed about that. I keyed into that word of knowledge and cried to God for mercy in repentance. And thereafter, I had peace. Two days later, which was this last Tuesday, I received a text message from my company issuing only a warning. No charges, no job loss, no shame, no reproach. Above all, the Lord has delivered me from the spirit of lust and greed. Can you join this brother to celebrate God for this great and mighty deliverance? I'm sure you can do better than that. Can we celebrate the name of the Lord? You are next in line for your own deliverance from addiction in the name of Jesus. The next is that of James Moifore from North Cyprus. James says, two months ago, I discovered Apostle Selman's message on Instagram and decided to follow Koinonia Instagram page and also committed to praying and worshiping with Koinonia. Last month, my friend living in the UK contracted COVID-19 and was seriously ill. By faith, I sent a prayer request to Koinonia, believing God will heal her. Just three days afterwards, she tested negative and fully recovered from COVID-19. <laughs> Additionally, my own miracle came during the April miracle service. I had been having abdominal pain and diagnosis showed it was hernia developing on the right side of my lower abdomen. While watching the miracle service, I placed my phone on my lower abdomen where I'd been having the constant pain for two years running. I prayed, believing I'll get my healing. And from that night on till date, the pain has disappeared and the bulging in the abdominal region has also gone down. I have been observing it since that day and it has not returned. Also, since that night, I have never had the urge to engage in watching pornography again. I'm completely free. Can we join? 
James to celebrate the name of the Lord for his great deliverance. The last but not the least, Reinhard Ononese. Reinhard says, last week miracle service, apostle prophesied that many of us will return to Koinonia. I beg your pardon. Many of us have been coming to Koinonia, but we have not testified that next Sunday was our day. And I held that prophecy that it was going to be fulfilled in my life. There was a certain pastor's wife in London who I had previously assisted for a, re a song release in London. And she had promised back then that she was going to appreciate me financially, but totally forgot about me. After Apostle's prayers, she sent me a text on that same night. Hallelujah. On WhatsApp. And then sent the money to me, not in Naira, but in pounds sterling. Can you say one? Two. Another pastor who I had, who I used to know, also in the United Kingdom, just woke up in the morning and decided to favor me with some amount of cash. This also came immediately after I had received the prayers for favor and increase in my finances last week. Can you celebrate God for this as well? Thirdly, this same last week, that's all within this one week, I was delivered from some darkened presence in my house that had frequently attacked me in the night seasons and also manipulated my dreams. God instructed me to watch Complete Deliverance Part 3. I obeyed and listened to it and also did everything Apostle asked us to do. That night, I was free, no more bad dreams, no more darkened presence in my environment, and I've returned to testify that I've been sleeping like a baby from then till now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lastly, Daddy spoke about those who their destinies was in a different country, and I knew mine was abroad. Amen. I praise the Lord. It did not take time. Within this same last week, my mother called me and told me to get ready that my time had come. A pastor also I knew called me and told me to get ready. That he knew my plans to move out of the country. And my elder brother also called to know how he could help facilitate the process, all within this last week. My American visa arrived, and the process to leave the country has been settled all within this week to the glory of God. Can we join him and every other person to celebrate this great and mighty God? Hallelujah. You are next in line for your own testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good evening, Koenonia. Good evening, sir. My name is Igwe Anthony. Um, cats can mean pets for a lot of people, but for me, it has meant a little different. I come from a family where a cousin is named after a cat. And... Um, at some point in my village, um, there was a cat trapped in between a window and mosquito net on the door. You couldn't explain how it appeared in between there. This happened after a prayer, coming back to Abuja. I've lived in an apartment for more than 10 years, and we've noticed cats around the compound. It meant nothing to me, till in 2019. And my in-law came with his sister. And they did some prayer and told me, these cats are not normal. Can you stop parking your car the way, the place you park it? I had noticed that these cats would normally stay under my car or my brother's car. And these things will continue. I didn't put any seriousness to it. I can't give such power to a cat. A lot has happened. Most times you see is they come to the backyard and cry like a baby and a lot of things will just happen. I keep rolling them away. But last week, 
I decided to just add it to the list of the things I'm asking God to just take these ones away. A lot of things have been happening around. You dig up a ground around there, you see one thing or the other that you don't expect to be there. I put it on the list. As I was going back after miracle service, as I was getting to the front of the gate, I saw two cats. They were leaving to the next compound. And from last Sunday till now, I tell you, this is the first thing I see in the morning when I wake up. I open my window, I see a cat right outside the window. These things cry all the night. Sometimes I spend the night reading because I don't like the disturbance. But since last Sunday, till this moment, I haven't seen one, not outside my window, not in the whole compound. I went to ask, can you see any cats? I'm looking for them. And the security said, they can't find any. I came to return the glory to God. Hallelujah. A lot of things has been holding, but I know God is rolling them away gradually. Praise God. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for what he has done in my life. Your name, so, My name is Vincent Emmanuel Adamu. Thank you. I want to thank God for what he has done for me. Let me say 10 years ago. If I read, since then, if I read, I will not understand. To a point that if they, I, I am not interested in buying books. If they give me a book, I will take it to my friend to read it and interpret to me what the books mean. That is how it continues. Until I come across the message of uh, our apostle titled, The Potency of God's Word. When I listen to that message, God changed my life. Hallelujah. Amen. That I can read and understand, not only reading, that I can sit down from morning till evening reading books. Hallelujah. May his name be highly exalted. Amen. Secondly, I want to thank God for what he has done last week. I am a kind of, um, should I call it shy or how? I feel it difficult to interact with people. Or to call somebody and say, I just feel like greeting you. I, felt it, I feel it difficult. And it is not ordinary because I discovered that it was not so with me then. Last week, when our daddy was ministering, he said, God will give us a miracle that will not, we can even come, that can keep us to come, miracle that will cause us to come and testify. Praise the Lord. And I thank God. When I went back, God did it. Hallelujah. That today I come here to testify because I am not more shy. Because sometimes they go. Even in church, if I am to dance, I find it difficult because something will be telling me that some people are looking at you and you don't know how to dance. But to the glory of God, and I thank God for the, uh, for the people that sang this evening, I was able to dance. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, I want to thank God for what he has done for me. I find it difficult to pray in the night. A friend of mine sometimes told me that he has ever prayed for 72 hours non-stop. I was wondering, how, did, how do you do it? He told me, if I go to my prayer altar, I should sing for three hours, then I should begin to speak in tongues. The first day I went there, I sang for three hours. When I knelt down to, to pray, I was blustering in tongues. Within 15 minutes, I slept off. Hallelujah. I slept on my knee for three hours. It was security that even helped me. Praise the Lord. And after service last Sunday, when I get home, I was like, okay, let me pray as normal so that I will sleep. I... Hallelujah. Just go straight to the point. 
So when I just knelt down to pray, I was praying. I don't know when I just said, let me check time. When I checked my time, it was 1.22. Praise the Lord. I, I couldn't believe it until, I, until the following day that when I know that something has happened in my life, I said, let me come and testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I return all glory to God in Jesus' name. Somebody is going tonight with fresh fire on your altar in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, Konenia. Hallelujah. My name is Kemisola Oladoni. I want to give glory, God the glory and adoration for what he has done in my life. Um, last year, I, at my working place, I was having a toxic environment and I was beginning to have this panic attack. So I was praying to God that God should give me a good job, easier job. You know, the job was good, but I want something that is more convenient and not that I'll be having panic attack. So I kept on praying. January this, um, January this year, it, uh, on the 7th, so I was led, I was strongly led in my spirit to, to have a fasting. Though it wasn't my fasting day, I was like, I, I didn't know what to pray about. So I just did the fasting. And when it was time for me to break, I was like trying in my spirit, ruminating in my spirit that what should I pray about? I don't know. So I have a lot of apostles' messages on my phone. So there was this particular message that Apostle preached about favor, and there was a prayer that backed it up. So I was, I, I just turned, I put my hairpiece and I was praying at the office, asking for God's favor. It was one hour long, and I did the prayer. That same evening, because um, on Tuesday, that was on the 4th, I applied for a job. Just, I just saw the job advert, I just applied. I've even forgotten about it. That evening, they called me that I should, that I, they scheduled an interview, an online interview. It was like a joke. I've even forgotten the name of the, of the company. It was just like a joke. This interview was scheduled. The following day, after the interview, we did the interview. The following week, and I was called that, can I resume the work? I was like, seriously, it was like a scam. And before you know it, my compensation analysis was sent to me. I was like, and I was told that, can you be a coordinator? And in the field that I was not, it, it wasn't my course of line at all. I, I did not even have experience in that field. So I was like, can you cope? I was like, I will learn. And before you know it, my compensation analysis was sent to me. And the salary was more than my previous place of work where my boss was saying that, oh, I'm paying you well, this Hallelujah. and that. Praise the living Jesus. And God did it for me. I got the job. And God has been faithful because the job, seriously, is stress-free. And God has been so faithful to me. And um, praise the Lord. Secondly, January, uh, we are planning, I and my husband, we are planning for our wedding. And January, my, uh, we are just trusting God for fund. So my husband, uh, sold, we, we decided to sow a, a seed for our first fruit. So he sowed his own seed in Kononia, and I sowed mine to uh, a man of God that I was led to to sow the seed. So, and after that, we were just praying, trusting, because we were not having any money, and the, um, the wedding was April. So, and um, before you know it, God just raised somebody, and the person was like, what do you need for this wedding? Okay, the person was like, send the money, and we will not even call. The person will call us again. Oh. Where, where do you, where, where, what, what is the next thing? What do you need? I told you to call me. I said, we don't want to disturb you, sir. We don't want to beg anybody for our wedding. We don't want to, and before you know it, God did it. We were, even when the person, every, all of the gifts we are collecting for the wedding, we, are paying, we were paying our tithe in Kononia, and before you know it, the wedding was successful without any debt. Without, you know some people will just do wedding and they will be paying debts after wedding. Can we without celebrate that for a testimony? Hallelujah. Congratulations. They sold their first fruits and God raised up destiny helpers for them. You are next in line in the name of Jesus. My name is Pam P. Ephraim and I'm here to give glory to God for my brother's life. My only brother... He got missing for about four months. I didn't hear from him. I didn't see him. He was nowhere to be found. And before my brother got missing, 
before my brother got missing, about 10 years ago, he graduated from Nigerian military school in Zaria. And since then, my brother has been disappearing. He started the first day he was supposed to write exams for NDA after he had passed the medical screening, everything. On the main day of the exam, we didn't find him. After he had missed the exam, he came back. Little did we know that that was just the beginning of disappearances in my brother's life. So every time he's, he comes close to a breakthrough or he has exams, he even started private school. After my parents wasted millions, he will not stay in school. And in 2019, he embarked on his worst disappearance yet. This time around, he disappeared without a trace, like not even on the internet for months. My mom became so worried. She didn't know if her son was, her only son was alive or dead. She fell sick, she died. After my mother's death, that was when I listened to The Mystery of Deliverance by Apostle Joshua Selman from part one to four, and then I realized my eyes opened. I thought I was so smart, and I had degrees, and I thought I knew things, but I realized I was so foolish. There was no way my brother's disappearance was normal. My eyes opened, and I said, okay, this time around, I'm going to handle it spiritually. So after my mother's death, he was not even at the funeral. After she was buried, then he came back home. And I thought he was so sad, and I thought, okay, this will not happen again. It happened again. And before my mother died, she told me, have you noticed there's a pattern to your brother's disappearance? He usually disappears at the end of the year. Like, so when we enter September, October, he disappears. Then within the first quarter of the year, my brother will resurface. Or when he has any breakthrough or something, then he disappears. And I realized she was right. So I came for February Miracle Service. It was my first time at Kononi. I brought my brother's picture. I cried out to God. I said, God. You can't let the devil take me out. I'm now the mother of the house. You can't let him take me out like he took my mother. Like, you have to come true. So as soon as I left February Miracle Service, I got a call from a strange number. I heard my brother's voice. He said, he's fine. He's alive. It's just that he's very far from home, but he wants to come back. God made it possible. We kept in touch till the time he came back. My brother finally came back home, and I planned to testify during the April Miracle Service. A day before April Miracle Service, my brother disappeared again. I was like, God, like the devil really even wants to steal my testimony. But glory be to God, my brother is right here. He's somewhere at the back. And I wholeheartedly believe that the altars that are responsible for my brother's disappearance today marks their end in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we join now to celebrate God? Tonight is the night of his deliverance in the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, Koinonia. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. All right. Um, I've always wanted to testify in Koinonia. And um, this is the right time to testify. Amen. Uh, when I was wishing to testify, I was single. Um, by God's grace, um, God has blessed me. God has blessed me to a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. It all started so many years ago, and um, a lot of things happened, and we parted. And God brought us back. We parted. And then, <laughs> and uh, last year, something happened, and we came back. And immediately we came back, and I said, no, this time around, no more going back. Amen. So I, I walked up to daddy and then I spoke to him. And he said, Owen, have you checked the thing that have been making you? And I said, yes, sir. Who is the problem? I said, daddy, me. Have you corrected it? Yes, sir. And he prayed for, he prayed for me and said, go. Amen. And um, we started the um, journey. And in December, I was supposed to go home for the preparation in full, and um, I lost my dad 24th of December, and I said, okay, maybe we'll have to shift this thing. I spoke to some, some of my friends, and they said, just shift it, and then some people just said, no, let it be. Since you fixed the date, um, 16th of April, let it be, and we stood by that date. We prayed together and fasted. There are some um, songs I always listen to, and I'll tell God, I say, God, this song, oh, I'm not going to leave it. So I can play the song from morning back to back, like in a week. And I'll just keep playing the song and I'll tell God, I say, God, let this be a miracle for me and for us. Amen. And by God's grace, on the 16th, uh, today, uh, yesterday was our two weeks anniversary. 
<laughs> Amen. By God's grace, um, I'm here to say thank you to Koinonia. The love from Koinonia was too much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daddy. And thank you to my department, aesthetics department. I love you. Thank you. Can we join Mr. and Mrs. Owen Akban to celebrate the name of the Lord? And for everything that the Lord has done, his interventions, his mighty hand, confirmation of the words of his servant, and all the miracles from all around the world, can we lift up our voices and begin to bless the name of the Lord? Let's thank him for his faithfulness, for his power. Let's thank him for his deeds, for everything he has done all within one week, and for many other things that we are even yet to hear about. Koinonia, can you shout hallelujah? Praise God. Can you still celebrate Jesus?